there's this uh, very interesting story that's been developing um, about Joe Biden and Donald Trump, uh, you know, having classified documents um, in their possession. And now Mike Pence, by the way, he's the latest two hours ago. So this is very interesting because for a couple of months we've been hearing about, oh, Donald Trump is, uh, you know, he's a threat to, to national security. He's been hoarding all of these classified documents in Mar-a-Lago. Um, and, uh, you know, he refuses to cooperate with the National Archives. Um, and, uh, you know, he's, he refuses to hand over documents. I think he handed over about 20 or something, but he has 300, allegedly. And, I mean, that, that didn't surprise me that he, he took them with him. Yeah, uh, most presidents do, actually. It's, it's quite common. Um, but this, this obviously became an issue because Biden, they discovered uh, that he also has classified documents from when he was vice president, okay? So, uh, this became very embarrassing, and, and uh, especially at, at a time when they're trying to make it look like it's Trump who's endangering national security and, and so on. And, and look, I mean, uh, I'm not defending either one of them. I just want to show you the hypocrisy when it comes to the Espionage Act and, and classification, because, uh, you know, anyone who tells you that there isn't overclassification in, in Washington, D.C. Is, is a fool. Uh, you know, they, they classify anything. It, it, I think I think it's honestly it comes down to lazy bureaucrats. They just <laughs> it's just much easier to stamp it as classified, and that's it, right? But let's talk about the possession of these documents because their their main point is that well, look, when 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 Trump was discovered to have these documents, he refused to cooperate. But when Biden discovered that he has these documents in his possession, he immediately turned himself in. I mean, his lawyers went to the DOJ and so on. Um, and, and so that, that's the key difference, right? Like Biden wants to cooperate and he's forthcoming and honest and Donald Trump is not. Uh, okay, neither of them are forthcoming and honest, so please stop this nonsense. But, uh, you know, <laughs> I want to I walk you through this article uh, from The Intercept, which is pretty good. Uh, and it, it has the timeline here, okay? So let's, let's go through this. So on November 2nd, 2022, a week before the high stakes midterm elections, Lawyers for Joe Biden discovered some forbidden fruit inside a seldom used office in a think tank bearing the same name of the 46th president. The, the lawyers were there to close down the office at the Penn Biden Center for Diplomacy and Global Engagement, which Biden inaugurated in 2018 following his eight years as vice president. So according to his legal team, while they were packing up Biden's papers and his other items, the lawyers found a batch of what appeared to be classified materials inside a locked closet in Biden's office suite. So Biden's team, according to their own account, swiftly reported the matter to the National Archives and offered full cooperation in determining how the documents arrived at the unsecured facility. The president claimed he was unaware of the documents and had no knowledge of how they came to be there. Quote, I was briefed about the discovery and surprised to learn that there weren't any government records that were taken there to that office, but I don't know what's in the documents either. So November 9th, a day after the uh, congressional elections, the Justice Department and the FBI began an initial assessment of the matter, and a few days later, on November 14th, Attorney General Merrick Garland assigned a U.S. attorney to, to initiate a preliminary investigation. The timing of this discovery, both in the immediate political sense and the broader historical sense, could not have been worse for Biden. The president's team did not inform the public about the classified documents once they were discovered. They did not inform the public that the FBI and the Justice Department had launched an investigation uh, into, into, the potential, into the sitting president on a potentially serious matter involving classified materials taken to an unsecured facility and remained there for years. The president and his advisors knew very well the political tripwire they had crossed and the implications it could have, not just on the midterm elections, but also on the case against his predecessor. So, so that's Donald Trump for the very same issue. So Biden's team kept it all a secret, and we may never know for how long they intended to do that. The White House, so uh, this is from uh, uh, the Washington Post, quote, the White House was hoping for a speedy inquiry that would find no intentional mishandling of the documents and plan to disclose the matter only after justice issued it's all clear. So here, as they say in the Intercept, it is not uncommon for presidents to violate the Presidential Records Act. And they, they, they uh, make the case that, you know, Trump's refusal to hand over the, the documents that he took is, is what is unusual, right? So they say the documents initially recovered from Trump, uh, they, they included uh, materials from the CIA, the FBI, the NSA, and other agencies reportedly. And in August, uh, the FBI executed a search warrant and seized dozens of boxes of additional materials from Trump's Florida state. Again, I, I, I 
I was so sick of hearing this, you know, oh my God, you know, federal prosecutors, FBI agents, they've seen boxes, like they're trying to make it out to be like Trump had some kind of fucking, you know, secret underground library in his resort. And it's so funny because when <laughs> Biden is caught doing the same thing in the same period, I mean, what are the chances of that, right? They have a completely different, uh, um, you know, they, they start singing a completely different tune, right? Very, very funny. And the, the way Biden talks about it, I mean, please, just let me show you how he, 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 um, he speaks about this, okay? Like, what, what his, his reaction is to, to a journalist to ask him. Mr. President, okay. classified, classified material next to your Corvette, what were you thinking? Let me, uh, the, I'm going to get a chance to speak on all this, God willing, soon. But as I said earlier this week, people, and by the way, my Corvette's in a locked garage, okay? So it's not like you're sitting out in the street. Oh, oh, okay. You guys heard that? It's in a locked garage. No need to worry. Chill out. So but at any rate. It was in a locked garage. Yes, as well as my Corvette. Shit, um, man. But uh, as I said... <sighs> Why didn't I think of that? Maybe, you know, if, if Chelsea Manning had, had told the, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the tribunal uh, at her court-martial that, uh, you know, he put the documents uh, that she gave to WikiLeaks next to her Corvette in her locked garage, she wouldn't have had to go to jail. Mm. Maybe Snowden should have thought of that, right? Maybe he, when he was in Hong Kong, he should have just called him and said, look, guys, documents are next to my Corvette in my locked garage. So don't worry. It's not like they're out on the street. <laughs> I said earlier this week, people know I take classified documents and classified material seriously. I also said we're cooperating fully and completely with the Justice Department's review. As part of that process, my lawyers reviewed other places where documents in my, uh, of, from my time as vice president were stored, and they finished the review last night. They discovered a small number of documents of classified markings and storage areas and file cabinets in my home and my, in my, my, my personal library. This was done in the case of the Biden Penn, and th this was done in the case of the Biden Penn Center. The Department of Justice was immediately, as was. Yeah, okay, you, you get the picture. They were next to his Corvette, that's all you need to know. <laughs> Look at this press secretary, okay, trying to handle this. Take a look. The president takes this very seriously. He does. He said this twice. And uh, he did not know uh, that the records uh, were there when they were found. Uh, he does not know what's in them. And what he did and what his team did is the minute that they realized uh, that the documents were there, uh, they reached out to the archives, they reached out to the Department of Justice. And again, he was surprised that these uh, records have been found. He does not know what's in them. And his team, once they ident identified that these documents were, were there, they immediately uh, reached out to the archives, to the Department of Justice, and did the, rightfully so, did the right thing by turning that over. And they have been cooperating uh, very closely with the Department of Justice. He said, we are confident that their thorough review will show that these documents were in all right, there, there's only so much verbal diarrhea that I can take, okay? And you, <laughs> you get the idea. Uh, this is very funny because the National Archives, right? They issued a statement. This is October uh, uh, 2022, a few months ago, right? And they said that the National Archives and Records Administration, in accordance with the Presidential Records Act, assumed physical and legal custody of the presidential records from the administrations of Barack Obama, George W. Bush, Bill Clinton, George, uh, George W. H. Bush, uh, George H.W. Bush and Ronald Reagan. Sorry, I get my war criminals mixed up sometimes. When those presidents left office. Um, that's a lie, okay? Because literally the next month, they're finding documents from the Barack Obama administration, of which Joe Biden was, was a part of. He was the vice president. In Joe Biden's, um, uh, you know, his uh, uh, office, where he, he was professor, and then later at his home. And so there... Like I said, they, 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 they're claiming Biden was forthcoming. He, no, they were, they were specifically trying to hide this, deliberately for, hide this from the public. And then when it was out in the press that, okay, well, they found documents at his office. They, they, they tried to keep quiet that there were documents at his home. And then that also came out. And so, you know, they grilled her. Uh, Jean, uh, Jean-Karine Pierre, right? The press secretary, they grilled her. 
about that. Like you were, you were just telling us two days ago that the, there are no more documents and that's it. And now you found other documents. So yeah, just going back, let, let's go back quickly to this uh, uh, Intercept article. Basically how there's overclassification where things that are not really related to national security that shouldn't be secret are, are simply marked secret because it's convenient for bureaucrats and also for presidents and politicians who want to hide secrets, right? They, there might be something embarrassing and they don't want people to find out, so just classify it. Which again, is, is, is not, you know, that, sh that, that is not what, what meets the threshold for classification as top secret. Uh, it, it has to be something relating to national security. Um, and this has been going on for years. It's not, I'm, this is not Joe Biden and, and Donald Trump who started this. This is many, many, many decades ago, right? Started taking this approach. So let me show you over here. This is the article at The Intercept. They say, while it is plausible that Biden is being honest when he says that he had no knowledge of the documents being at his think tank office, the administration knowingly left out crucial details, including the garage documents, and only came clean when journalists exposed new documents or were on the verge of doing so. That's, a, that's what I told you a few, a few moments ago. And now here we come to overclassification, right? So, you know, there, there, there's a, a, a very um, a, a poignant quote here from the ACLU, right? American Civil Liberties Union. And so, quote, the entire classification regime is a joke. My hope is that liberals do not adopt the line that the classified documents in Biden's garage, even though we don't know what they are, are harmless. And the classified documents at Mar-a-Lago, even though we don't know what they are either, are a grave threat to the nation. The overwhelming likelihood is that neither breach is likely to harm much of anything. And uh, I mean, I guess this is a good point, right? Uh, remember that Trump was president, and if he wanted to harm the U.S. and give information to adversaries, he could have done that every day for four years. Again, I, I, I like and dislike this sentence for, for um, a couple of reasons. I, I like it because it's, it's very sane and logical, but I don't like it because it starts, um, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of bringing up this, uh, uh, oh, uh, Trump is a Russian agent. Look, man, you have so many things that you can criticize about Trump uh, that, that are very, like, you know, just disgusting and evil. I mean, um, pardoning those Blackwater mercenaries is one of them. Uh, you know, just basically bending, you know, bending over backwards to please Israel, uh, prosecuting Assange. There's so many reasons, but they don't do that. They're more interested in this fantasy. Oh, Russia, Russia. Dude, uh, no one cares about this. It's, it's not real. But on the topic of giving information to adversaries, or, or I mean, it, it doesn't matter. Even if you give information to allies, you're still going to get in trouble because you're not allowed to do that, uh, depending on the document. I'll just give you an example because they're, they're acting like it's only Trump who could have done that. No, it's not. It could have been Trump and Biden as well. Remember, Biden's son was, was uh, you know, pimping out his father's position when he was vice president. So, you know, these documents relate to that era. And I'm not saying that these documents have anything to do with Hunter Biden's business. I'm just saying that the possibility of, of Biden uh, or Trump giving documents, uh, whether it's for business or, or uh, you know, any other reason, it's equally possible with both. It doesn't have to be only Trump. Yeah, it could be both. You don't, you don't know. Um, and, and it, you know, in terms of corruption, uh, uh, I mean, Trump is corrupt as hell. He's corrupt as hell. And, and you guys remember how he was trying to make people stay at, at his resorts, um, whether it's secret service or, you know, having them go through his, um, uh, what was this refueling story in Scotland? You remember uh, at his resort there so that, you know, basically the government would be paying him, you know, for, for using his hotels and his services. That's corruption. You know, um, and having foreign dignitaries stay at, at, at the Trump Towers, that's corruption. But Biden's also corrupt, all right? And he's been in D.C. way longer, so he probably knows how to hide it better. <laughs> I don't know. But, and his son's corrupt, too. So, again, um, you know, this is equally, equally possible. Uh, here's a quote from Obama, okay? So he told Fox News in April 2016 that, quote, there's stuff that is really top secret, top secret. And there's stuff that is being presented to the president or the secretary of state that you might not want on the transom or going out over the wire, but it's basically stuff that you could get in open. Okay. Um, and then here we have, uh, this is Jaffer who's citing the observation made by Justice Potter. So quote, when everything is classified, then nothing is classified. Okay. And given the number of classified secrets and the number of people who have access to those secrets, it's just practically impossible for the national security bureaucracy to keep track of them. And, and once again, this, this relates to um, how those documents could, you know, they might as well be toilet paper because you can stamp anything you like as classified. 
uh, especially as president. Now, here we get to the most important point. This is the crux of the issue. Because I'm, I'm trying to show you how these guys are hypocrites. You know, Democrats, Republicans, um, Biden, Trump, they're hypocrites. They're doing the same thing. And, and presidents before them done the same thing. They steal these documents. But the more important point is that there's a double standard in how uh, whistleblowers and journalists are treated uh, under the same laws, okay? So you guys know the Espionage Act. This is from 1917, and it's, it's um, you know, I mean, it, it's never really been about spies. I know it was done during World War I, and it claims to be about dealing with spies, but if you look at the, the tally, I mean, in the end, you've had this Espionage Act used against uh, more people who are not spies than, uh, um, you know, than people who are, because it's a political tool. It's about jailing people you don't like, right? As The Intercept, uh, uh, you know, eloquently point out, in the case of whistleblowers charged under the Espionage Act, the accused are not even permitted to explain their motive for leaking or publishing classified materials that expose government abuses or crimes. That's true. That, that is true. Okay, so you saw Joe Biden's press secretary saying, well, he doesn't know what's in the documents, and, you know, it's, it, they're pro it's probably nothing in there. It doesn't matter. That you, you don't, you're not allowed to even defend yourself uh, in, in um, an Espionage Act trial. You know, and that's, uh, I think that's been the case. Uh, we were just talking about the Pentagon Papers in 1971. Since then, right? So I, I, I remember uh, Ellsberg saying in court that uh, ever since he was put on trial, uh, no one uh, who's ever been charged with the Espionage Act since, since his trial uh, was allowed a public interest defense. It's just, it doesn't exist. You have to shut the fuck up, and, and that's it. There's, there's no excuse why you leaked it. There's no excuse for you to publish these documents. Not allowed. These cases are relegated to a technical yes or no question about mishandling classified intelligence. And the criminal sentences have been extreme. So reality winner, five and a half years in 2018. Um, Daniel Hale, 45 month sentence last year in 20, uh, now it's 2021, so two years ago. And both of them, Reality Winner and Daniel Hale, were prosecuted under the Espionage Act. Down here, they also talk about how, uh, you know, Bill Clinton's former National Security Advisor Sandy Berger and, and CIA Director Petraeus, uh, you know, they, they've both done the same thing. So, uh, Berger stole documents from the National Archives in 2003 by stuffing them inside his clothing and then destroyed. Some classified materials you know he pretended he needed them for a testimony and then when it comes to petraeus he was forced to resign as cia director in 2012 after it was revealed he had improperly handled classified materials including taking some to his home and sharing them with his biographer so when it comes to berger who stuffed them in his coat and burned them he was fined fifty thousand dollars and lost his security clearance and petraeus got two years probation and a hundred thousand dollar fine i mean yes that's a lot of money but for those people it's pocket change and the point is that they didn't, they, they didn't face any jail time for doing things that are fucking insane. I mean, like, <laughs> just stuffing documents in your coat and burning them or, or you know, taking them home with you. Dude. I mean, that, that, that's actually a security risk, and it's also corrupt. Uh, you know, Edward Snowden blowing the whistle on NSA mass surveillance, that, that is a necessary... Uh, uh, it's a necessary good in a democracy or a purported democracy, and it was in the public interest. So, you, you know, you got every reason to defend that, to okay that. He's basically chased out of the U.S. Um, of course, he left there willingly, but they canceled his passport. He can't come home because, he, you know, he won't get a fair trial. So, yeah, he's basically exiled. You know, look at the, the contrast. You see how stark it is? You know, so if you, if you mishandle classified information for the, the good of the public, uh, they'll ruin your life in your family's life, but if you do it for personal gain and you're the CIA director, you'll get a little slap on the wrist. Don't worry about it. Both Biden and Trump have advocated harsh criminal penalties for leakers and whistleblowers. In Biden's case, he spent decades as a U.S. senator trying to strengthen laws governing improper disclosures of classified information. As vice president under Obama, he was part of an administration that prosecuted more whistleblowers under the Espionage Act than all administrations in history combined. As president, he has continued this trend, including through prosecuting Hale, refusing to pardon reality winner, and continuing the Trump-era effort to extradite WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange. Again, Julian Assange is not just a WikiLeaks founder, he's a journalist. 
So, uh, very again, uh, very very important to to uh, to underline that he's a journalist and and publisher because Julian Assange never mishandled classified documents. He's he's not an American citizen. He 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 didn't work for the U.S. government in any capacity. Uh, he is he is not bound by any agreement. Uh, so you know, it literally does not concern him. Uh, that's like saying you know. Uh, uh, I mean, again, I've, I've drawn this example, like, what, how do you think the U.S. would react if, I don't know, Saudi Arabia wanted to snatch some American who lives in China for writing nasty things about MBS? They'd lose it, right? So um, I think, I think it's, it's, uh, it's disgusting, this double standard. You know, they, they, they uh, use the Espionage Act just to ruin people's lives for doing good things. And then for corruption, uh, for, you know, personal gain, oh, it's okay, don't worry about it, slap on the wrist. It's good to underline this because, yes, know that the you know there's a large portion of the media that are outraged about trump and then they give biden a pass yeah and it's the other way around you have some that are outraged about you know biden and and give trump a pass fine uh that's not the main point here the, the point is that when you mishandle classified information uh to do whistleblowing uh you know to tell the public about something that that is in their interest that that you have every reason to uh you know uh, uh even a to tell the public about a government crime. So you're, you're informing them about something uh, illegal and criminal that's being done at the government level, which they have a right to know and which should be halted. You get in trouble. But these people, they don't get in trouble. So you see, again, you got a two or three tier justice system. You know, it's really what, what, it, what it comes down to. And uh, these guys, they really put the criminal in criminal justice system.